because tonight is living with the right perspective. But I know she didn't see my notes because there's no way she could have saw them. Well, that was a good confirmation for me. Uh, you know, you, you guys might think, oh, man, the, you know, people that, you know, ministers or pastors or evangelists and the fivefold ministry, <laughs> we're still in a growing process, too. You know, a lot of times I'm ministering to myself while I'm up here. A lot of time as the Holy Spirit ministers to me about what I'm ministering to you about, he's really dealing with me in a lot of areas of my life. And sometimes I still uh, struggle with my perspective on my life. Understanding the call of God is a very important thing, and that's where my perspective needs to be opened up and changed. The right perspective is God's perspective. See, not every time my perspective Uh, agrees with God's perspective. I have to be open to change. You understand what I'm saying? See, man's ways are not God's ways. We must develop the mind of Christ in order to have the perspective of God. See, we can live life with the wrong perspective. How many have ever lived their life with the wrong perspective? Um, I remember a time of life where I looked at money with the wrong perspective. You know, today I got a ticket, and I was talking on my cell phone. I wanted to see if my wife wanted a Starbucks. Praise the Lord. And uh, he came out, oh, boop. I knew it. I was like, ah. Oh. My perspective was not where it used to be. Because before, it was only on the money. Because that's what was important to me. That's what was My perspective was how much money can I get and, and save? How many things can I get? The perspective of today's situation was a lot different because thank God I have the 150 and now lesson learned. Stay off your cell phone. Before, I would have been mad at the cop. Who's he, why is he getting me? There's criminals out there. There's all kinds of people going on. He wants to pull me over for a cell phone. Perspective. See, my perspective was not of God at one point in my life. In fact, I spent a lot of time wasted with the wrong perspective because the wrong perspective, what does it do except keep you in worry and doubt? We spend so much time spinning in circles, consumed with fear because our perspective is not the one God would have for us. Come on. I spent many of minutes, many of hours, many of days with the wrong perspective, which got me nowhere. 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 Because I had to, to, to change, which was hard. But in order to change, it took work. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna keep staying on track here. Our perspective is developed from when we are little kids to adults. Okay? The world's perspective will beat us up, spit us out, and a lot of times leaves us as damaged goods. This is why many of us continue to live a defeated life after being saved because we do not take on a new perspective of life. Many of us are damaged goods. God can bring us healing. God can bring us and make us whole. But we have to put in the work to develop the right perspective. There's certain perspectives that we can have and develop in this life because of the world beating us up. Some of them which come to mind is a victim perspective. Me against the world. Nobody cares about me. This is a perspective that some carry in life that allows them to live constantly defeated. The know-it-all perspective. I know everything. You cannot teach me nothing, and I'm going to be unconvinced of what you're trying to tell me no matter what. The know-it-all perspective. How many know somebody? The nothing matters perspective. This was mine. This is where I found myself guilty. I didn't take nothing seriously. Giving up on life is what you've done, and you're living hopeless. 
See, we think, oh, I don't care about nothing, so I'm okay. That's how, you find, that's how I found myself in a big hole. <laughs> I didn't care about paying bills. What does it matter? I'm not going to go nowhere with my life. I don't have a high school education a diploma. I don't have a, a, a college degree, which the world tells me I need to prosper. See, I wrote myself off a long time ago because of the perspective of what the world put in me. But then God cleansed me and put his perspective, his point of view in mine. And I seen, you know what? It's not over. It's not the end of the road. It isn't boys to men. You understand what I'm saying? The end of the road. Still, I can't let you go. No. Just. It wasn't the end of the road. God had bigger and better plans for me. But in my messed up perspective of life, because I was already beaten up at 15 years of age, I had already given up hope because of what was around me. Friends were drug addicts. Dying, getting shot, couldn't see past the neighborhood I lived in. Many of us are still stuck in that perspective of life. Cannot break a family curse because of our perspective. This is me, and this is all I have to look forward to. Thank God that isn't his perspective of you and of life. Amen? Amen? Thank God that he can make our perceptions new and make a hopeless person have hope. See, the Bible says we were blind, but now we could see. We were once dead, but now we are made alive. But how many are holding on to the dead man's perspective? How many of us are not looking past of what we can see? We are human beings. We cannot see past the three-dimensional realm. But only with his perspective, we can see past the three-dimensional. See, what may seem impossible to me is not impossible to God, but unless I use his perspective, I'm stuck like Chuck. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. Can I get an amen? I came here to teach tonight. I don't say that boastfully. Don't get me wrong. I don't say it boastfully. But this is something that I've fought for years and continue to fight sometimes. But man, sometimes you just got to embrace God's perspective on who you are and what he has called you to do. And when you can embrace that perspective, whether it be ministering on a stage, whether it be knocking on doors whether it be feeding the homeless, whatever it may be that God is calling you, when you embrace his perspective on your life, it will bring fulfillment to you. See, the void will not be filled ever until you see his perspective and live by it and abide by it. See, not saying that my calling will never have me knock on doors or feed the homeless because it might. But I have to be open to his perspective. I have to be able to see how he sees. See, my th thoughts are far away from his thoughts. I put myself in a box every time. Why? Because of the flesh. Yep. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. As for you were dead, I was dead. We were all dead in our sin. Not one of us. Don't be so self-righteous. You thought you were never dead. We were dead in our transgressions and sin. Well, I never had, you know, struggled with addiction. I never lived a street life. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You were still dead in sin. As long as you did not have God. In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. And the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us say all. All of us lived among them at one time. How we get so self-righteous we judge them? If all of us lived among them, we should be fortunate that we were called out by his grace, his love, and mercy 
and not judge them, condemn them, because we used to be a part of them. Shows you how much of the church has, does not have the perspective of God because they rather judge. Gratifying the cravings of the flesh and following the desires and the thoughts, chasing the perspective of the world. I added that. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. But because of his great love for us, his great love, thank you for the love of God. Because he's seen past the sin. He's seen past the disobedient. He's seen past the rebellion. Who is rich in mercy made us now alive. How could we be dead and now made alive without changing our perspective on life. Your perspective changes once God enters in. The way I view life when I was dead was not the way I view life when I was made alive. Thank you, Jesus, because my perspective was wrong. What I thought was right, what I thought was holy, was no longer holy in the eyes of God. It wasn't my works. Come on. It wasn't my deeds. Hello? That's what we like to do because we're human. It's our nature. Man sinned against God and he rose up. And he rebelled against him. Committed treason against God. Now, in my perspective, I like to itemize sin. I like to categorize it. I like to put it in its box and label it. But God does not label it. All sin is treason against God. Whether you're a liar or a thief, it's all treason. Hate is not white or black. It's hate. God don't see white hate. God don't see black hate. God sees hate. It's all treason against him, but we don't see his perspective. We put ourselves in the same box as the world because we're not touching God. We're touching our mind. It sounds good. The philosophy makes me feel good. Listen to this poem, Charlie. It moves me, but is it the word of God? Because if it's not, it's not truth. Every man is a liar, but God is truth. Hello? I'm sorry. My voice was high right there. A change of perception is the aftermath of salvation. I was blind, but now I see. For people I didn't care about before I was saved, I started to care about when I got saved. My character, learning the word. I didn't care what anybody thought of me. At least that's what I thought. I don't care what you think of me. I'll do what I want. Right? Many of us think that way. I don't care what people think of me. I do what I want. And we thought we thought that. But we did it with the wrong perspective. Now we come to Christ and we're so sensitive. Sissy baby lalas. I'm sorry, but I came into church at 15 years of age. I've been defend, offended almost every day for a year that I came to this church. I was offended. I was hurt. He told me, don't wrestle with me, Charlie. And I'm like, why? Offended, hurt. You know, you go to the gym. What's the worst day? Leg day. That's Anthony. I don't like leg day. I don't do it well either. <laughs> Coming to church was like every Sunday was leg day for me for a while. It pushed me. It tested me. It challenged my perspective on life and on things. It wasn't the pastor. It was the spirit of God trying to move inside of me. It was the aftermath of him touching my heart. See, perspective is only what's in your heart. But in order to change our perspective, we must embrace the renewing of our mind. 
Sometimes I look at scriptures and I'm talking about subjects. I'm like, God, get me away from this. He said, how can I get away from this when they're not listening? Romans chapter 12. Actually, turn your Bible to Isaiah 55. I'm sorry. I went from old to new. I went from darkness to light. Oil and vinegar don't mix. Oil and water don't mix. But how can we try to mix God with the world? We try to get his perspective and the world's perspective and intermingle them like it's going to mix. They don't mix. It don't work. He said, if you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Somebody with the perspective perspective of the world will not understand that statement. I like challenging myself. I like, I like listening to things that are going to broaden my perspective on who God is. So I listen to things that challenge me. I, I, am, I am like the farthest mathematician. My daughter came home from fourth grade and she's, dad, help me with my math. I'm like, I think you're going to have to call somebody. <laughs> Can we phone a friend? Like, <laughs> Do we, get, do we get options here? I ain't lying. And then she tells me today, Dad, I don't want your help. I was like, man, that's cold-blooded. Because she seen me struggling the night before. She said, I'll just ask somebody at school or at church. I'm like, all right, I get it. Well, thank you, Lola, for that boost of confidence. But I like challenge myself to open up my perspective. And I watch this debate and this debate. And, and these guys are using words that I couldn't even pronounce. They're talking about stuff. But it was amazing to me how the questions that this atheist man had. He had some amazing questions that could make half of us in here like think, like, I don't know how to answer that. But you know what? There was no way in any form or fashion he was ever going to be responsive to any answer that he was given because the Spirit of God did not exist inside of him. And the Bible says, if you reject me, you're not going to understand me. That's paraphrased. You can't convince somebody God is real if they want to stay convinced that he's not. And many of us waste our time arguing with them. The man asked a simple, a hard question, what it seemed to be a hard question. He said, give me something that any man has done that is greater than the other man. They're all the same. We can all do it just as well. And the guys came up. He said, I can do, I can name you one act that was done that no man can ever do. It was easy for the Christian to answer it. But no other Christian has answered this question. He said, Jesus died on the cross for all of mankind's sin." Nobody else can ever do that again. It is done. It was written. It, 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 it's done. And he came up and spent about five minutes explaining why that was not a correct answer. <laughs> it was simple to me. Do something that nobody else can achieve or ever do that's good. Jesus did the unachievable. Very simple. But in his mind, he was still unconvinced. He refuses to believe. Many of us refuse to embrace the renewing process. We want to continue in the way we grew up, bound by our mind, keeping the same perspective of the know-it-all. Who's he, that bald-headed Mexican? He can't tell me nothing. What does he know? It ain't me, fool. Get past me. Listen to the Spirit of God inside of me. See, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, he that is in me is greater than he in the world. I am not greater than no one, but the spirit inside of me is. See, and that same spirit that is in me can be in you. And once it abides in you, guess what happens to your perspective? It changes. So where I did not have confidence, I can now have confidence. Where I lacked fear, I no longer have to fear because my perspective has changed. Now I can be like David. Who is this filthy Philistine? Mountains come my way. I'm going to chop its head off. Don't you know I'm a son or daughter of the king? 
See how the perspective, but we don't have that perspective because as soon as the attack comes, we buckle on our knees and fall. We curse, we yell, we get angry. And say, I don't understand. I'm going to tell you something. I've had bill collectors. Her name was Miss Baker. <laughs> Call me up. Remember her? You don't remember her when we first got married? I had, I had a bunch of tickets. Miss Baker and me were on a first name and last name basis. Central Collections. How many know what that is? Yeah. Hey, Amen. When I first met her, she paid my taxes. That's not why I married her. <laughs> I looked good, though. Sean John, rims, leather, gold. Couldn't pay my taxes. Perspective. See, all you guys looking at Facebook and, and, and Instagram, wanting to be like other people's life, coveting your neighbor, you know, they don't tell you how much debt they're in to live that life. But we covet it. And we chase it. We run after it, thinking that's our perspective. They ain't going to put their bill on there. They ain't going to put their, their maxed out Visa card bill. They ain't going to put like, I still live at my mama's house. <laughs> Hashtag blessed. But see, we look at those things and they mess up our perspective and we say, why, God? I'm trying to serve you, but I'm still struggling. Look at them. They're not trying. <coughs> but that's not even the real. But because our perspective isn't changed, we're still trying to chase that and not chase after him. See, I'm going to tell you one thing that changed about my perspective where I don't have to worry about money because I stopped worrying about money. Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That means every time these doors are open, I was here. When something was needed, I was here. And I tried to make a commitment and I kept it. I was faithful to God. And when I was faithful to God, he was faithful to me. It wasn't my ability. It was him in me. He gave me favor. Look at three banks, two banks, closed doors. Out of those two banks, they kept me every time. Favor. Guess what happens if this one goes down? I'm still going to have somebody providing my needs. Why? Because I serve the king, not my job. Lord, I ain't ready for that test. <laughs> we have to be honest with ourselves. And understand and come to grips with that our old perception was not God's perception. We got to let it go. We got to let it go. You know why I know you still have your old perception? It ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't hard because of what you say and what you talk about. The way you view things, the way you view life. And I'm going to ask you some questions and it'll make you question your perspective. Isaiah 55, 9 says, As for the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my, are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. How else are we going to get a different perspective rather than getting a hold of him? See, I, this is my little switchblade, the word of God. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not of this world, but they are mighty through God. Now, this in itself is not a weapon, but it living inside of me is. This ain't nothing but a book, a piece with paper in it. It ain't going to hurt nobody. But when the truths of it are living inside of me, watch out, because now I have power and authority. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. We have to embrace the renewing of the mind process. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The church has blinded your eyes. The church has blinded your eyes to the renewing of the mind process. How? By you putting hope in the laying on of hands. By you putting hope in somebody praying for you and believing for you, rather than you doing the work and getting a hold of God for yourself. By people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You don't get knowledge by sleeping. You don't get understanding without seeking. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by how? The renewing of your mind. Now, see, I touched the hand of God. It opened my eyes to a new perspective, but now it's up to me to hold on to that hand. 
Many of us have touched the hand of God. We felt the hand of God, but we let go as soon as the problems came. Because it was easier to live with that perspective. It is easier to live without hope than to live with hope. Many of us are that one with the perspective of we're hopeless, we don't care anymore. I lost my job. Oh, well, I'll collect unemployment. I'll be happy in this apartment and eat my McDonald's. No goals, no dreams, they all were washed away because of disappointment that's happened in our life and it killed the perspective of God that's inside of us. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God. How many know what testing is? Anybody ever took a test? I don't like tests. I used to sweat during tests. Armpits were sweating, forehead was sweating, other things were sweating, everything was sweating, I'd get nervous, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna buckle. I don't like testing. But you know what, we ain't gonna get nowhere in God if we don't learn to stand up to a test. Every time, every time you, I, I mean, I swear, man, when I got married, I would fail the test every single time my wife would throw an attitude my way. I'm going to tell you the truth. Can I be real? She'd be, she throw me an attitude, I threw her some cussing. I'm going to control this situation. You know what that made her feel about me? Less respect. Man of God at front of people, cussing when he's away from people. Didn't respect me for a long time. Five years maybe. It took me to stand up and be the man of God that I am today. To where when I, she wanted to make me, it got to the point where she wanted to make me angry, and she might admit it, that she wanted to see what I would do because she's a woman. I'm going to say, oh man, she said something. She knew exactly what to say to me too. <laughs> she did. She knew exactly what to say to me to move me, to mess me up inside. But until I passed that test, not once, not twice, but over and over again, she learned to trust me and trust the Spirit of God in me and know that I am a man of God when I'm away from her or next to her. So you guys want to know in the relationship problems what the problem is? You are, man. Oh, man, I tell you, some hairs, if I had hair on my arms, they would stand. I remember some of, the, some of the stuff we went through, and my mom was there one night. It was horrible. The tests were not fun. They were not fun. They were horrible. But I learned to pass them. Why? Because I wanted more of God. I wanted his perspective on life, on my marriage, on my family. Because my perspective, her perspective on our marriage, not mine, but her perspective was we weren't going to last a year. She'll tell you. A year. And now we're going on 13 years. Right? <laughs> but it wouldn't have happened if I didn't change my perspective. It wouldn't have happened when I didn't change my perspective of what a man was because you know what? It doesn't happen too often where a man knows how to be a man nowadays. I'm just keeping it real. But as somebody invested in me, had a faith and hope in me, thank you, Lord that I'm able to be the man that I am today and I was able to change my perspective from the little kid just wanting to be a thug. Shorty want to be a thug. See, that's all I listened to was gangster rap. That's all the movies, colors, New Jack City. I'd want to watch those Carlitos way every day because that was forming my perspective on what life was about. Respect, eh? I respect you, Holmes. What did that get me? but in a bigger hole sometimes. Nothing. My perspective on life changed. There had to be more to life than this. And when God started giving me his view on life, it changed. 
It says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, it says, and to be renewed by the spirit of your minds. We will not pass the renewal process if we don't accept the fact that our, our opinions are not truth. This is particularly for the men. Because men don't like to be told anything. Even the easygoing guys that I know. They will nod their head and say, yeah. But they'll go home and not listen to a word that you said. I know because he used to tell me all the time, Charlie, this is how you do it. Okay, pastor. <laughs> right? And I'll go home and do nothing he said. For a long time. Because I thought my opinion was truth. I knew best what was for me. How is anybody else going to tell me anything? Proverbs chapter 21 verse 2. A person may think their own ways are right. But the Lord Weighs the heart. The Lord weighs the heart. In our mind, we think we're right. But our hearts are really deceitful. We must acknowledge that we were born into sin with a sinful nature. And we are subject to a naturally selfish being. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitfully above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? See, in the renewing process, we need to consistently check ourselves to see whether we're in the faith, whether we've been saved a month or a year or 10 years. We still need to consistently check ourselves. Some of us had a good perspective and, and, and it was aligned with God at one time, but our perspective has changed because we don't check ourselves to see whether we're in the faith or not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Why do I get so irritable around the brotherhood? Why do I just dislike everything that the church is doing? Did you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test? Unless, of course, you fail the test. There's no gray in God. There's no excuses in God. But there is grace. Amen? There's a difference. It's a matter of the heart. No excuses. See, some of us, we take the grace for granted. We don't know when that grace is going to run out. But there is grace. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm not talking about being perfect. Because his grace is available to us. We are going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up sometimes. We're going to see red. We're going to say something. But thank God for his grace. But perspective is powerful and it can change any situation even when the situation itself does not change. Perspective. As a believer, your outlook on life, your perspective should not be one of despair like many of us have. No hope for our friends and family. No hope for the world. The Bible says, I, sh I don't want to see one perish. No, not one. He reiterates it. But if we cannot be the hope, what hope can they have? If our perspective is the same as theirs, what example do they have? Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Believe it so that the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. That means in any situation, you must have a perspective of hope. I know it seems impossible and I don't like where I'm at, but I have hope. Why? Because I have God. Yeah. 
Some people have lost their jobs in this church. Some people have had divided families in this church, but they did never lose their hope. And God is faithful to restore. Too often our perception is altered and we lose focus of that very hope that we're supposed to have. Now I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to think about this. What is your perception of the church? Why are you here? What are we doing? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 22 says, In him, meaning the church, you are also are being built together into a dwelling place for the God for God by the Spirit. Meaning we have purpose to be a church. Why? This ought to be a dwelling place for his spirit, for the presence of God. This ought to be a dwelling place for deliverance. This ought to be a dwelling place for hope. But how many of us don't understand that? We come in here with the wrong perspective and we bring our problems and our troubles and don't understand why we're getting together for. And when we don't have that understanding, guess who misses out? The one that needs the hope. The one that needs the healing. The one that needs the deliverance. Don't raise your hands, but what is the perception of your pastor? Oh, he just wants my money. He just likes telling me what to do. He's always beating me up. Jeremiah 3.15, And I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with the knowledge and understanding. Oh, is that what it's for? After whose heart? After God's heart. What is your perception of life? Why are we here? Is there aliens? We, we asked the foolish. I, I, anyways. Who cares if there's aliens or not? If there's aliens in eternity, that's going to be awesome. But what does it have to do with my salvation? Some of us are stuck in the 60s and we still got some of that acid flowing through our fat cells. <laughs> Spaced out, man. Whoa, dude. We have no person. Matthew 16, 25. For whoever will save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. We lose our life. We die to ourselves. We gain in him. That is really living in God, to die to self. Because I'm going to tell you something, this is not for eternity. This is not forever. I'm preparing for eternity. See, that's many of us problem right now. Our perspective can't see past death. But yet I'm promised eternity? You see how little that makes half your problems? If not all? This is not forever. This too shall pass. But you live as if this is it. Gloom and doom can't pay my PG&E. Your lights will get turned back on somehow or another. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. Follow these principles and we won't have to go without. What is your perception of sin? That's a good one. That's nah, no big deal. I've been this way my whole life. I ain't never going to change. Only God can judge me. I like that. One. I always use that for some reason. Because it's funny to me. But it, we, we, six, Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is what? Death. And this is not just a physical death. This is an eternal death. What's your view? What's your perception of sin? What, what, what is your perception when you sin against God which caused you to separate from him? See, many of us don't want to acknowledge this God. We don't want to acknowledge that there will be eternity in hell. We don't want to read that part because that part hurts. So we can't make excuses. But the, but the free gift of God is eternal life. 
So he gives us an alternative. It doesn't have to be death. It's your choice. I said it before. Your perception is an interpretation of what's in your heart. Paul, his perception was changed on the Damascus Road. See, Paul, Paul was a reflection of what was in his heart, and he was going around persecuting Christians, killing them, because his perception on what religion was all about. And it just took one touch from God for his perception to be changed. Amen? In Acts chapter 9, Saul was converted, then he was baptized then he immediately changed his message. His perception was changed, boom, right on the spot. Many of us, our perception was changed, but like I said, we let go. Paul never let go of the hand that changed him. Amen? How many can agree with me that Paul was a man of the Spirit who understood the things of God? who wrote some powerful things to change the lives of many and continue to change lives today because he held the hand of God and he allowed him to change his perception on what Christianity and what religion was. In verse 20, it says, Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues and the Son of God. Immediately his message was changed. In 21, then all who heard was amazed. Why? Because the Spirit of God was upon him. They knew. Look, look, look at this. It is not he that destroyed. They're talking about Paul. Is this not the one who destroyed those who called on this name in Jerusalem? Didn't he kill the very ones that were calling? And now his message has changed and he's preaching of the same person he was persecuted for? Talk about a perspective change. Talk about an enlightenment. Enlightenment. The Spirit of God entered him inside him. He was blind. Talk about an experience. How many of us had had experiences like that in our life, but let we, we choose to let go, and slowly but surely, we didn't guard our heart. We let go of the hand of God, and now our perspective has slowly converted back to the person we used to be. No longer are we excited about church functions. No longer do we have a vision of our own ministry. I don't hear people talking about, man, I, you don't have to wait for somebody to organize something in the church. You can go knock in a door and feed a mouth without somebody organizing something. But when the, you feel God and the call of God in your life, you're just going to do it. You're not going to wait. You're not going to wait and say, oh, I'm praise to God, I'm a leader. You're just going to do it. When the unction of God is on you, no man can stop the call of God. He will open up a door that no man can open. But we get lazy and we we lose focus and the perception of God is no longer strong in our hearts. I admire Paul because he held on and he stood out among the rest. The only one that never walked with Jesus, that didn't walk with Jesus. But he understood the spirit of God so strongly that it changed his life. That same spirit is available to us. Some of us are even sleeping right now because we're so dull. (laughs) The word of life is being ministered, but yet we're falling asleep because we're so wore out. From what? I worked. I have kids. I have a wife. I did all these things. Now, granted, some of you may have woke up earlier than I did. But the fire that we once had is no longer there. I'm going to tell you, we cannot get it from religion. We cannot get it from coming to church and attending. For our perception to constantly be his, we must constantly reach and try to touch his hand. We must constantly be seeking understanding and seeking his wisdom. That ought to be the cry of our hearts. Not so that I can be this smart guy, but so that I may witness to somebody See, in order to get somebody saved, I have to see past their fake smile. I have to see past their joking and be able to see into their heart 
and I will not be see, seeing people's heart. There's so many of you sitting right here that are disappointed in God. Lost his perspective. No longer find joy in his presence. I don't know that. I was just prompted to say that. Why? Because the, the preaching doesn't meet to our standards. The pastor isn't a loving man and call, on, call me and see how I'm doing. We use all these excuses. My old church did it this way. This guy does it that way. But God does it every way. Because all of us only have a little bit of the truth in us. Where's our passion? How altered is our perception? Because we refuse to guard our heart. Amen? Thank you.